Welcome to the Timing Analyzer online training. My name is Steve. This training is available for desktop viewing as well as in format compatible with portable devices, both available from the same link included in your registration email. For either version, while watching the training, use the controls at the bottom and side of the screen to navigate to any point. Feel free to pause the training at any time to experiment with the software. When you're done with the training, please use the link provided in the registration email you are sent to provide us feedback on the training and ways in which it can be improved. I'll remind you about that later. In this course, you will learn how to perform timing analysis in the Intel Cordis Prime software using Timing Analyzer. You will use Synopsys Design Constraints or .sdc files to constrain a design to meet timing requirements and to compare results. You will learn how to generate timing reports in Timing Analyzer and gain familiarity with its graphical user interface. Here is the agenda for this course. In the first part, we looked at basic timing analysis concepts and terminology used in Timing Analyzer. This included a discussion of the terminology used to select nodes from the SDC netlist for targeting timing constraints. In the second part, you are introduced to the Timing Analyzer GUI and its use. In this part, you'll learn how to incorporate Timing Analyzer into the Intel Cordis Prime design flow and take a look at Timing Analyzer's reporting features in more detail. In the final part, available on the Intel training website and linked at the end of this training, you'll learn about SDC constraints required to fully constrain a design as well as a number of optional constraints. Now that you know the basics of how to use the tool, how do you incorporate its use into the Intel Cordis Prime Design Flow? Here is a slightly altered version of a typical Intel Cordis Prime Design Flow that incorporates the use of the Timing Analyzer. If you are using the Intel Cordis Prime Standard or Light Edition, you can use a post synthesis netlist to start creating timing constraints and analyzing the design before performing a full compilation. To do this, first synthesize the design. Timing Analyzer requires the design to be synthesized in order to create a post map netlist. Next, you'll use the Timing Analyzer flow just presented to specify timing requirements for the design. As mentioned earlier, Timing Analyzer in the Intel Cordis Prime Pro Edition software does not support analysis with a post synthesis netlist. If you're using this edition of the tool, You'll start by adding your .sdc file or files to the Intel Cordis project settings, which we'll discuss in a moment. Follow the timing analyzer flow discussed earlier, starting with the creation of the timing netlist. When generating the timing netlist, use the dash post map argument to use the post synthesis netlist if the design has only been synthesized and not fully compiled. To do this, Either use the create timing netlist command with the dash post map argument in the console or use the GUI and select post map as the input netlist type is shown here. If you have already performed a full compilation, use the default post fit netlist type. With a slow corner delay model, you can also choose a device speed grade to use for the analysis. By default, if this option is enabled, the speed grade of the currently targeted device is used. Change the speed grade to see if a design that is not meeting timing could meet timing in a faster device or to see if a design already meeting timing could still meet timing in a slower, potentially less expensive device. With the post map netlist type selected, the zero interconnect delays option is turned on automatically. Since there is no routing yet selected with the post map netlist, the timing analyzer should assume that there are no delays on any interconnect in the device to see if it will be at all possible to meet the timing requirements specified by the constraints. Continuing the timing analyzer flow, enter or create constraints in the usual manner, either directly in the console or in the SDC file editor, either manually or with the GUI constraint dialog boxes. Remember that if you are entering constraints in the console, you'll need to write out a .sdc file for use by the Intel Cordis Prime fitter. At this point, you could continue the timing analyzer flow presented earlier 
reading in the .sdc file you've created and generate timer reports. However, note that reports generated at this stage of the design flow, based off the post synthesis netlist, only provides preliminary timing numbers for the design. Paths that fail timing in these reports may be optimized and improved by the fitter during a full compilation, allowing them to meet timing. As such, only use post-map reports to help with fully constraining the design and to get an idea of what the final timing numbers for the design could be. Next, for all editions of the Intel Chorus Prime software, you'll specify timing analyzer settings and select the .sdc file or files for the Intel Chorus Prime software to use as a guide during fitting. The Intel Cortis Prime software uses SDC constraints during the placement and routing of a design. The constraints are used as a guide for selecting device resources that will meet all timer requirements for all timing models. When choosing the files to use, the fitter first looks for .sdc files that have been explicitly added to the project settings. If no .sdc files were added to the project, the fitter looks in the project directory for a .sdc file that has the same name as the current revision of the project. This is the same behavior used by the Timing Analyzer tool. The addition of .sdc files to the Intel Cortis Prime project and other Timing Analyzer settings are found in the Timing Analyzer category of the Settings dialog box. Browse for .sdc files and click the Add button to add them to the list. You can change the order in which the files are used by clicking the up or down buttons. The fitter views multiple .sdc files as basically one long SDC file. Constraints that are dependent on other constraints must be listed below the constraints they depend on, either in the same file or across files when multiple files are added here. For example, a synchronous I.O. delay constraint depends on the clock that launches or latches the data. The clock constraint for this I.O. constraint must either be listed earlier in a single SDC file or in a file higher up in the list when multiple files are used. It is also possible to have duplicate con constraints. A duplicate constraint is a timing constraint lower down in a single .sdc file or lower in the file list that is in the same type of constraint and targets the same location in the timing netlist as another constraint. Timing Analyzer and the fitter will use the duplicated constraint, override constraint, and displaying a warning. However, in some cases, it may be advantageous to target a particular location in the netlist with different values for a single type of constraint. As we'll see, some constraints include options for doing this. Timing Analyzer settings also contain options for generating time reports directly in the Intel Cortis Prime software. With the options indicated, you can enable the reporting of worst case paths in the compilation report and select a tickle script to customize the timer reports generated during compilation. Normally, the timer reports generated and displayed in the compilation report are very basic, requiring you to switch back to the Timing Analyzer interface to generate more detailed, customized reports. With these options, you can generate the same detailed reports in the Intel Cortis Prime compilation report without having to switch. Once the timing analyzer settings are configured in the Intel Cortis Prime software, perform a full compilation. The fitter will be guided by the SDC timing constraints. If you are using the Intel Cortis Prime Pro Edition, either perform a full compilation or compile up to the fitter stage desired, either planning, placement, or routing. After compiling, use the extensive reporting capabilities of the Timing Analyzer tool to verify whether you met your timing requirements. During compilation, timing summary reports based on the post-fit netlist are generated and appear automatically in the Intel Cortis Prime compilation report. For more detailed timing verification, follow the steps for using the Timing Analyzer reporting features mentioned earlier. When creating the timing netlist, use the post-fit netlist option if using the Intel Cortis Prime Lite or Standard Edition, or the desired fitter snapshot if using the Pro Edition. When creating the netlist, you can choose to turn on the Zero IC Delays option. 
This is normally off for a post-fit netlist, but you can turn it on to see if there's any chance of meeting timing with the current timing constraints and project settings. If timing fails at this stage, even with zero IC delays enabled, you'll probably have to adjust your timing constraints or optimize the project in some way in order to meet timing. Once the netlist is generated, you can access the most commonly used timing reports from the Tasks pane. To easily recreate the same reports each time you use the tool, place reporting commands in a tickle script file and run the script from the Timing Analyzer script menu. Using a script file is also very useful if you are creating your own customized timer reports. It saves time in having to create complicated report commands. Remember that the reports you generate after the fitter has run should be used to verify whether the fitter was able to meet your timer requirements. If any part of the design is failing timing at this point, the design or timing constraints must be adjusted to fix the problem and the design recompiled to implement the fix. Before discussing SDC constraints in detail, let's take a closer look at some of the reporting options available in Timing Analyzer. Before looking at reports in Timing Analyzer, let's look at reports that appear in the Intel Cordis compilation report. Here you can see the basic timer reports generated by the tool during compilation. Notice the multiple timing model report folders within the Timing Analyzer report folder. Multi-corner analysis performs timing analysis for all timing models supported by the targeted device. Each timing model's folder includes summary reports with the worst case positive or negative slack displayed for each clock domain in the design. As mentioned, you can also have the tool generate additional, more advanced reports using a tickle script. These additional reports appear in a separate folder in the complex report named TimeQuest Timing Analyzer GUI. To create more detailed reports and have more control over what reports are generated, use the reporting features of the Timing Analyzer tool. You can quickly create simple reports from the Tasks pane or Reports menu, or create more complicated reports with reporting dialog boxes and command line reporting features. Again, store your reporting commands in a tickle script to easily recreate reports when making changes to timing constraints. All generated reports can be output to three different destinations. By default, all generated reports appear in the View pane and are listed in the Report pane. You can give a custom name to a report in the Report pane or in the View pane with the Dash Panel Name option. The Dash Multi Corner option works with the Dash Panel Name option to create placeholder reports for additional timing models. This makes it easy to create custom reports for all supporting timing models using the options discussed earlier. Reports can also be displayed in the console with the dash standard out option. Another option is to store reports as external files. You can create plain ASCII text files or HTML files for display on the web. Use the appropriate options in the console or in the reporting dialog boxes to select where and how reports should appear. Here is what a report appearing in the view pane looks like with the dash multi corner option enabled. A folder is created to store the individual reports for each supporting timing model. Without the dash multi corner option, only a single report would appear in the report pane, and the report in the view pane would include the custom report name. Reports output to the console look like this. Expand individual paths in the report to get more detail. Finally, reports output to files look like this. They contain all the textual information that would be found in a report in the GUI. Create new files in either plain text or HTML formats, or append new reports to existing ones. Reports are organized by report type in the Tasks pane and the Reports menu. One type of report you can generate are diagnostic reports. Diagnostic reports don't contain specific timing information, but they do contain information that is helpful for constraining a design. We've already discussed the report underscore SDC command that is used to see what constraints have been applied to the netlist. Report underscore clocks provides a list of all constrained clocks in the design. 
any signal that is located on a device clock pin or the clock input of a register is considered a clock signal that must be constrained. Report ignored constraints lists constraints that the timing analyzer is intentionally ignoring, usually because of typos, incorrect syntax, or incorrect constraint arguments. Finally, the report unconstrained paths command is useful for seeing which paths in your design are considered to be unconstrained by the tool. You want to get to the unconstrained path count down to zero in this report to make sure that all paths in the design are constrained. Summary reports are the most basic type of timer reports and the ones you will use most often. Separate reports are needed for the setup and hold analyses. Use the recovery and removal options for asynchronous signal analysis. Each row in a summary report represents a clock domain in the design. The worst case positive or negative slack in the clock domain is shown. If the slack is negative, it will appear in red and the endpoint TNS column will indicate the sum total of all the negative slack within the clock domain. This gives you an idea of how badly the paths in a particular clock domain are failing timing. You can also right click a clock domain in the summary report and select report timing to get a more detailed custom report on the paths within that clock domain. The report timing option lets you create custom detailed reports about a clock domain selected in a summary report or about any path or paths in the design. Access the dialog box from the task pane, the reports menu, or by right clicking on items in already generated reports. As, as mentioned earlier, you can select where the report is sent, either a view pane in the timing analyzer interface, the console pane as ASCII text, or out to a text or HTML file. You can also select the detail level of report. By default, the detail level is set to full path, which provides detailed information for all elements that make up the clock and data paths associated with the selected clock domain and targets. Another detail level option is summary. Use the summary detail level to see summary reports similar to the clock domain summary reports shown earlier with each, each row in the report representing a separate path. One final important option is the number of paths to include in the generated report. With this option set to anything greater than one, the paths with the most negative or positive slack are listed at the top of the report. Analyzing multiple paths in a single report is very helpful in spotting timing failure trends. For example, if all or many of the paths in a particular bus are failing timing, an adjustment to the design of the source or destination registers or the timing constraints on just those paths could fix the problem without having to analyze each and every path in the bus. A single constraint using a wildcard would handle the entire bus. The equivalent console or script command and options are shown here. As you can see, there are many options available but they can be divided into three general categories. The first set of options are used to choose exactly which paths to include in the custom report. You can choose specific elements in the SDC netlist discussed earlier, or choose paths based on what clock domains are used for the launch or latch edges. The second set of options are used to choose basic options for the report itself, such as the detail level and the report destination. The final set of options choose exactly what information should be included in the generated report. This includes the number of paths options just discussed as well as an option for slack limit. With this option, for example, if you only want to focus on paths that were failing timing, you could set the slack limit to 0 nanoseconds. That way, no paths with a calculated slack greater than 0 would appear in the report. Use the GUI and the console command options to create reporting commands that can be placed in a script for repeatability. Some of the more often used reporting timing arguments are shown here. Each has an equivalent option in the GUI. Select the type of report, either setup or hold for synchronous paths, or recovery or removal for asynchronous paths. Each type of report is mutually exclusive so you'll need to generate more than one report to see the complete analysis results for all paths. 
select the detail level with the dash detail argument and the number of paths to analyze with the dash and paths argument. Here is what a detailed Slack path report looks like. Notice that the reporting command generates a report for 10 paths in the design with a detail level set to full path. The summary of paths at the top of the report lists the 10 worst setup timing paths launched by the clock times 1 clock domain and latched by the clock times 2 clock domain. The columns in this summary report indicate the calculated slack on the paths, the source and destination nodes, the launch and latch clock domains, the timer relationship between the two clock domains, the clock skew between the clocks arriving at the source and destination registers, and the total data delay along the data arrival path. After selecting a path from the list at the top, the details for that path are shown in tabs in the bottom two sections of the report. The Path Summary tab, selected on the left, gives you a basic summary of the selected path, its source and destination nodes, as well as the calculated values for data arrival time, data required time, and slack. The Data Path tab on the right provides detailed information about the data arrival and data required paths discussed earlier. This includes the logic cells and interconnect the signal passes through and the accumulated delay through each of these elements. This is very useful for seeing if a certain part of the path is adding an unusually large amount of delay into the signal. The Statistics tab provides detailed statistics about the selected path, such as the percentage of time spent in interconnect versus the time spent going through cells. The Waveform tab provides a graphical representation of timing waveforms for the data arrival and data required paths, similar to the waveforms presented earlier. Delay elements listed on the Data Path tab can be easily correlated to the waveforms on this tab, such as clock and data path delays. Use the Waveform tab to see exactly how and where the timing analyzer selected values for calculating the slack. Cursors in the Waveform tab snap to timing events in the waveforms, making it easy to see the amount of time that passes between two timing events. Finally, the Extra Fitter Information tab provides information about any physical placement constraints on the logic cells that make up a selected data path. These constraints, such as design partitions and logic lock region assignments, may force the fitter to place design elements in particular locations on the device which could be the cause of a timing failure. Near the bottom of the tab, you can see a miniature version of the Intel Cortis Prime Chip Planner giving you a bird's eye view of the routing of the path in the chip. This helps to visualize the placement of the path and how the listed physical constraints affect the path's placement. In addition to detailed timer reports, you can generate a special report that can help you get started with closing timing on your design. The Timing Closure Recommendations report will analyze your entire design and make suggestions to help solve common timing closure problems. Some common recommendations you may see include duplicating the source registers of high fanout nodes, moving or removing restrictive logic placement options or other fixed location assignments, and reducing the number of logic levels on certain critical paths. If your design is failing timing, run this report as a first step to help find ways to fix the design. This concludes Part 3 of the training. If you missed Parts 1 or 2, or you'd like to continue on to Part 4, you can register for free at the link shown here. To learn about additional resources available to help you with using Timing Analyzer, continue to the next slide. For more information about timing analysis and the timing analyzer, be sure to read the timing analysis overview and timing analyzer chapters in volume 3 of the Intel Cortis Prime Handbook linked here. To learn techniques for closing timing in a design using SDC constraints and timing analyzer, see the timing closure and optimization chapter in volume 2. If you'd like hands-on experience with timing analyzer, or you want to learn advanced techniques for closing timing in a design, enroll in any of the Timing Analyzer related instructor-led courses listed here. There are many free online training courses 
just like this one, that can help you learn more about timing analysis and timing closure. Use the links here to register for a course or to find more training at the Intel Training website. One last thing, when you registered for this training, a link was sent to you in your confirmation email that links to a short online survey. Please complete the survey to let us know what you think of this training and if you can think of ways that it can be improved.